Or you want to sit with your parents? Get in your house, unlock things, yeah. Anything else, purpose of a key, mainly that's pretty much it, you know, yeah. Start a car. Can your, uh, can your, car, can your car key open your house? Okay. Really? Your car key can open your garage? You got one of them fancy cars. You know that people got cars that they mash a button on their key and it cranks the car? I don't have one of those, but they're pretty neat because you can sit in here and it'd be like 20 degrees outside and you could hit the button and it'd crank the car for you. Ain't that something? It's amazing what keys can do. But there's only certain keys that fit certain things. You know, just like one, one Sunday I, I came to church and I've got another set of keys that sit beside them keys and instead of grabbing them keys, I grabbed these keys. And I came to church, and I think I called Bobby because I had lost my key. I, I said, I didn't bring my keys. I grabbed my keys to, like, my safe, and, well, that ain't going to get me in the church because there's a key on here that fits the front door, but the key ring I brought didn't fit, get me in that door. So I couldn't get in. Well, that takes me to John 14, 6, Okay. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So how do we get to heaven? What's the key thing to get us to heaven? Yes, ma'am. To believe in God and also to believe in who else? Jesus. Jesus is our key to heaven. We might, have, we might think there's all different, and some people think there's all other ways, all other keys that have fit the door to heaven. But Jesus said that I'm the way, I'm the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through me. He also said in Revelation 1.18 that he has the keys to death and Hades, which means death means physical death and spiritual death, but also Hades means hell place called hell. And Jesus has the keys to them too. And through the Lord Jesus Christ, you might experience physical death, but spiritual death, your soul will live forever with Jesus in a place called heaven. Because if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the key to heaven because it's Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. And no one gets to the Father, which the Father is in heaven. No one gets to heaven without Jesus. Amen? So know that what key you got to have. And don't be like me and, and, use the, and forget the keys. All right? Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we just thank you for Jesus and how he is the key to heaven. Lord, help us to be what we need to be for you. And Lord, I pray for these young people. Lord, that in due time they will choose you as the key to where they will receive eternal life through you. To where one day we will all be with you in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Are you having children's church today? But y'all could sit in here and be fine. That's We're good? Okay. All right. Y'all could go sit with your parents. And uh, y'all can hang out with me today. All right. In big church. You're in big church today. That's cool. Good morning, Concord. Isn't this a beautiful day? Got the rain, 
My Lord. And we've got the green pollen on the cars or on the carport or whatever. We got all that. But you know what? The good Lord's going to take care of that. I told my wife yesterday, I went up to the, the car wash to get the car wash, and it wasn't working. It was working, but I couldn't work it. I don't know what was wrong. But anyhow, I went back home, and I said, told my wife, I said, I'm going to leave this car out here in the rain, because the good Lord's going to rain tomorrow, and it's going to wash it. I woke up this morning, and by crack it, there it was, the rain that God is. Isn't God so great to all of us? We don't know really how great he is until we get to missing him. And when he, you're missing him, and you know how far he's from you, how far do you think God is from you? You could say to yourself, where's God? And he'll say, hello. He's that close to you. Remember, don't ever, ever forget that. God is with you always. And when we leave this world, we're going to go to a place that we can't hardly, we don't know what it looks like. The only time in the Bible that I know of, and I hope I'm right, anybody's ever thing said anything about heaven, what it looks like, was Paul. When he was in Damascus, he said he got a glimpse of heaven, and it was something he couldn't even write. He couldn't even begin to describe what heaven looked like. And that's the only time that I know it's in the Bible that talks about heaven. And you know how you got to get there? One way, just like the preacher said this morning. There's only, to get to heaven, there's a one-way street. You got to believe in Jesus Christ, that he's the Lord and the Savior. And if you believe that, you can become a Christian. The gentleman, our preacher, when I get through here, he'll tell you how to do that and how easy it is to do. Sometimes it's hard to keep it, but we as human beings can do it. This was past week, for those of you who didn't get, a, get to attend for some reason, we had a preacher here that I'm telling you, you talk about a preaching man, he's just about as good as our preacher. He, not only did he talk about the Bible, the things that he told you, he told you the scripture would back it up. Let me tell you something, those of you who didn't come during the revival, you missed something. I, wasn't really, I came twice, I wasn't able to get to the other two. But I'm telling you, when I come in here, when I walked out that door, I knew God was in this church. When you walk through that door of Concord Baptist Church, to me, it's the most beautiful sight in the world. I've been around a lot of places, but I've never been to a church when I walked in and feel what I do at this church. God is in this church, and a devil that can't come in, and we ain't going to let him in. Now, that's, that's what I want everybody to do. Keep the devil out of the church, and you got a good thing. One more thing that I, I'll mention, and i got a little thing I want to read to you, and I'll publish. Last Sunday, we had a thing here. Of the, how many were not here last Sunday? Give me your hand. You missed the bag lady. And I don't know where she came from, but I know one thing. She got to talking and people got to laughing and carrying on. And what it was doing, she was getting your mind ready to receive what God had intended for her to do. She had, she joked and carry on, and everybody sat there and listened to that. And I guarantee you, when she got to the end, she sang one beautiful song. Then she opened her book. She had her bag. And that book, can you imagine what book that was? It was the Bible. And Lord, that's what we need to do, is keep that Bible handy and keep it open, okay? Then she got through that, she sang that song, and they opened that book, and she had the invitation. People were here, and, I, I, and I'll, I'll say this. 
I've heard complaints that someone said, oh, well, what was she doing on Sunday? What she was doing on Sunday is get you here, get your mind open to Jesus Christ and to our preacher and f f to be saved. But people, you can only be saved one time in your life, you forever. And the only way you can do that is you've got to ask Jesus to forgive your sins. Our preacher will tell you just exactly how to do it and how easy it is to do it. So those of you who didn't come to hear the preacher here about Hobbs, I think his name is, you missed a treat. And I'm so glad that I came. So let me read you something um, from one of the things that uh, he talked about. A lady is looking for oil. Okay, this is called, it's from the uh, Lifeline thing. It's called God Provisions. He says, three years old, a three year old brother and his mom went to church each week to help unload groceries from the food minister truck. When Buddy heard the, his mom tell his grandmother that the truck had broke down, and he said, oh no, how will they get food to our people? And Buddy smiled, and he says, I have money. Le leaving the room, he returned with a plastic jar full with his, collect his collection of $38. Though Buddha didn't have much, God combined his sacrifice offering with a gift from others to provide a new refrigerated truck so that the church could continue serving the community. A small amount offered generously is always more than enough for place in God's hand. In King, 2 Kings is a poor widow. 2 Kings 4, a poor widow asked the prophet Elijah, for financial assistance. He told her to go get all the jars she could and she didn't have any oil and nothing else in there in the house. But he told her to go get her and shut the door. And he had one jug that was full. And he started pouring, uh, the lady started pouring each one, all the jars she collected from the neighbors for to put some more uh, oil in. One job that she has is all, all the, 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 they, they, says you got that one jug to full. So go get all those jugs. She brought them all in, started pouring wine. And when all of them were full of, of the oil, the first vessel that she started pouring from was full, still full. It's just like Jesus on the mountain when they served, served the fish and the braves, they were very much, but he served 5,000 people. That's the same God that we worship today. If you, if you have any questions, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, don't leave here without it, because you're not promised tomorrow. And if, you don't be, if you're not a Christian, and if you happen to die, you know where you're going. If you are a Christian, you know you're going to heaven, but if you're not, you're going straight to hell. That's the short and long of it. And I thank you so much for listening to me, Mama, or whatever up here. But I, I get up in this pulpit, and I don't want to leave it. I'll tell you what, God is a good God, and I love him more than anything in this world. And I thank you. Mr. Bill is so right about our church being blessed by the good Lord. We've got so much talent in this church, and yet they still keep asking me to sing. <laughs> and this song, this song more or less fits me. I'll, I'll say it's a, um, I haven't sang it in a while, but I used to sing it occasionally here. But uh, if you listen to the words, you'll understand. comes 
Mr. Bobby, you're part of the talent that we have. Everybody has a purpose. God has a purpose for each and every one of you to contribute to the kingdom of God. The question is, is that are you contributing to the kingdom of God? Only you can answer that question. Are you using your gifts and your talent? To glorify God for the kingdom of God in your personal life. First and foremost, it's in your personal life because uh, the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ starts personally with you and God. It's not about church. It's about you and God every single day walking and talking together and reading the word and communing with God. That's where it starts first and foremost. Then it, then it comes out of you and into your family, which is your first ministry. Your family is your first ministry, not the church. Your family is your first ministry. It comes out of you and goes into your family. And then from that, it goes out into people you come in contact with in the church and in your workplace and fa family and friends that you come in contact with. It just flows through you and comes out of you into all of that. And that's what it's all about. But first and foremost, it's between you and God. First, so I hope you have that today. We had a powerful week with revival. Had two people to get saved Wednesday night. Praise God! We've had uh, several people to um, rededicate their life. I had someone call me on the phone that saw it online. So praise God for you know online ministry too that they rededicated their life. So praise God for that. So there's a lot of decisions that were made. And even decisions that were made that I don't even know nothing about. And I don't have to know. Folks, do your business with God. If you're lost in here, you can go home and get by your bedside and you can repent 
of your sin and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be just as saved as coming down this aisle, but come down the aisle and make it public. Tell somebody about it. Get baptized. Get plugged into a local church. And allow, to God, allow God to use you and to be used for the kingdom of God. So I challenge you to do that. But today we're going to be talking about sleeping on Jesus. I'm going to go a little, I'm going to go past Easter. Well, I'm going to go into like the beginning of Easter. And this is in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm not going to talk about his prayer this week. I'm going to, talk, I'm going to share that next week. But I'm going to be in Luke chapter 22, 39 and 41. And then I'm going to skip over and go 45 and 46. And uh, sleeping on Jesus. My question is to you, are you sleeping on Jesus? Let's stand as we turn to Luke chapter 22, 39 through the 41, and then 45 through 46. Luke chapter 22, 39 through 41, and then 45 and 46. It says, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw away and knelt down and prayed. Let's jump to 45. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you not, lest you enter into temptation. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray now that you will speak through your servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Jesus asked his disciples to pray that they would not fall into temptation because he knew that he would soon be leaving them. Jesus also knew that they would need extra strength to face temptations ahead, temptations to run away, temptations to deny their relationship with him. They were about to see Jesus die. Would they still think he was the Messiah? The disciples' strongest temptation would be undoubtedly to think they had been deceived. Jesus taught them, Jesus trained them, and soon the test would be coming. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very relevant in the time that we live now. Have you been trained? Have you been taught? Have you been equipped? Because troubles are coming. Troubles are coming. Troubles were coming for them. This was before he had been betrayed and, been, and he was turned in and they were coming to arrest him and then soon he would be crucified. So he trained them, taught them. Have, have you ever been, and that they were fixing to face some uncharted territory because they were been following Jesus, right? And soon, as you know the story, Soon Jesus was going to be going away. And they were going to be on their own. And they were going to be challenged to believe whether this Jesus was for real or not because he's fixing to get taken away and get killed. Which none of them were thinking about that. Have you ever been, uh, I'm sure everyone has gotten a new job in here, right? Right? Everybody's been through a new job You've been through some training, and then you get thrown out on your own. Have you ever experienced that, anybody? I know I have. You went through a job, and you got the training. They trained you. You was equipped, whether you paid attention or not. Sometimes I, I paid attention, sometimes I didn't, and you learned the hard way because trials and tribulations and, and troubles were coming, and some I, I, I excelled at and some that I failed at, but it's a, very, it's a very scary time when you, you're in a job and you get trained and you get thrown out there by yourself, and you have, you know, nobody's walking there alongside you to help you. I remember that <clears throat> when I was with Coca-Cola, 
And uh, I was doing service work for them. And, and McDonald's and Burger King, they have these things called multiplexes. It's a big, elaborate, um, it's, it's a big, elaborate fountain system that's led by that just all this stuff. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can really mess something up. And I tell you what, if you really want to mess up a restaurant, you mess up their drinks because that's where they make the money at. And uh, I remember working on one for the first time, and it was, and, and it was very intimidating because I didn't have that person alongside me that knew, knew everything about it and that was training me. And this is what they were fixing to face. They were fixing to face. They were being trained. They were following Jesus. They were seeing the miracles. They were going through all the stuff. And, and they're fixing to be, I guess, thrown out there to the wolves, you say. And, but, and Jesus is not going to be there with them. He's going to be away. That's why Jesus told them to pray, lest you fall into temptation. Because a lot of things are going to go through their mind. A lot of things probably did go through their mind about their relationship with him and about um you know is he really the messiah done all these great things to die they didn't see it how are you today the disciples were facing a scary time without their shepherd how do we stay close to god well, one way we stay close to God is to pray. We told them to pray. How's your prayer life? Have you been equipped and have you been trained and to, to when troubles come your way that you know how to react and you know how to pray? Because troubles are coming. How do we fight temptation, folks? Pray. We fight temptation in prayer. We get tempted every single day. Who does not in this room get tempted every day? I don't see no hands. That's why Jesus told them to pray, lest you fall into temptation. Yes, Jesus was talking about the temptation, about, you know, I'm fixing to go die, and you're going to be challenged of whether you're going to acknowledge me, even like Peter. You know, he denied him three times, right? Pray, don't fall into temptation to reject me because I, that opportunity came. Don't, don't pray so you won't be challenged to where this is not the Messiah. Ladies and gentlemen, have you prayed up? Are you prayed up in our society today when everything is telling us that he is not the Messiah? This is just a book, God does not exist. God, this is old mess. This is your parents' religion. Have you been prayed up to believe that this is true? Because trials are coming, and we can see it in our schools. We can see it in our society. You can see it on social media. I'll tell you what, the worst thing that's ever been created is social media. I'll go ahead and tell you that. I'm not a fan of it. I hate it. And I know hate's a, a really bad word, but you're supposed to hate sin, too, as a Christian. Worst thing to ever happen. Please, 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 please know what your kids are on on social media. Know what your teenagers are on on social media. The devil is in it. And he wants your kids. He wants your teenagers. He wants you. And he'll work through social media to get you and get your kids. And you won't know nothing about it. So I challenge you, if you got a child, know what they're good looking at. Know what they're on. If you got a teenager, know what they're getting their business. Turn the phone off. Disconnect it. Give them a beeper. <laughs> Y'all know what a beeper is? I used to have one when I was 16. I thought I was something else. I had a beeper. But you got to find a call. You got to find a phone to call somebody. So. But I know I'm chasing something else. The way we pray, the way we, we get out of temptation is that we pray. The way that we fight the things that are coming up against us, we pray. And that's why Jesus shared this with his disciples to pray. The disciples needed to pray to strengthen themselves. We need to pray and to communicate with God to strengthen ourselves. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the church and Christianity is in a fight like never before because there's so much fighting against the church. There's so much fighting against Christianity. There's so much fighting against the family that we need to pray and we need to seek God and Jesus in everything that we do. A lot of us don't even realize the importance of church, the importance of Christ in our life and Christ in our families because the devil is having his way with families, churches, and people all all over this great United States of America. And it's so freely. We can freely come here today. We could have freely come to revival this week and not worry about getting gunned down outside. Sometimes people do that. We have evil in our world. And the reason why we have evil in our world is because we took God out of our society. We've put God out of schools. If you want something out of society, take it out of school. Because that's where we start. Amen? Amen? Pray, and he said it twice, pray that you may not enter into temptation. He said it twice. After he had been praying to the point that blood was seeping out of the pores of his skin, and he comes back and he sees them sleeping. Wonder how Jesus felt. I wonder how Jesus feels about you as a Christian. You've been sleeping on God? You've been sleeping on Jesus? I wonder how he feels about you. As, you know, he is faithful, always been faithful to you, always been faithful to me. And then he comes in and I'm sleeping. And I'm sleeping on him. Or I'm sleeping on the ways of God. And that brings me to my second point where it talks about why do we sleep? Why do you sleep on God? Do you think something else in this world and our society is so much more important? Do you think your career is more important than God? Do you think your uh, lifestyle is so much important than God? Do you think your reputation in like the business community is so much important than God? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you when you die, you're going to die with nothing. He don't care one thing about your business. He does. He cares about how you do your business, and he cares about what you're going to do with him in your business. That goes for your family business, your self-employed business, even the business that you are in that somebody else owns, that you work for. We are working for God. And we need to honor him in everything that we do. So why do we sleep? Why do we sleep on the one that gives us eternal life? Why are we not equipped? Why are we not getting prayed up to handle people telling us that God is not real? God is dead. Jesus was just a teacher. Christianity is false. You don't need Christianity. There's other ways. And ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of college kids that have been to college has had their mind changed from who God is. And the colleges are working really hard to keep doing it. You've got to be grounded and you've got to be firm in your faith before you go to a college in our country to not get swayed of who God and Jesus is because they are trying their best to teach you about everything else except for the salvation through God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need to equip ourselves, we need to equip our kids, we need to equip our teenagers, we need to equip our college kids. Just because the college kids goes off to college does not mean that they're grown and gone. They need it, they need help then and need spiritual guidance from you, mom, dad, grandparent, grandmother, than any other time in their life. Why do we sleep? After all Jesus has done for you, are you asleep for him? We need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to wake up to what's going on around us. Amen. It's so selfish of us not to, to, to not wake up and see what's taking place all around us and see what's taking place in our culture today. Jesus said, rise. Rise. 
and pray lest you fall into temptation. Wake up. They were asleep. A monumental moment with Jesus. He tells them to pray, to not fall into temptation, to get equipped for the days ahead. We had revival this week. Some people came one night, some people came two nights, some people came three nights, some people came all four nights. Were you sleeping on Jesus this week? If this church didn't exist next week, would it bother you? This church has been a beacon in this community for since what, 1842? When well, they moved it. It's been a beacon. It's supposed to be a beacon. It plays beautiful music at different times of the day. Just to let people know that it's here. Would it bother you if this place was not here anymore? Some people wouldn't bother them. They're living their own life. They don't need church. You need church. You need Jesus. You need Jesus first. People say, well, I don't have to go to church to worship the Lord. Are you worshiping the Lord? Nine times out of ten people say that, they're not doing it. That's just an excuse. Sometimes people, but I challenge you not to do this. This is the only time you're exposed to the Word during the week. When you come to church. And then you'll go home this afternoon and tonight and you'll carry on with your life. You won't pick this back up. You won't do what Jesus said to pray where you will not be tempted. Let's look at the flip side of that. I guarantee you if you don't pray and you don't do business with God, you're going to be tempted and you're going to fall into temptation and you're possibly going to fall into sin. Right? Satan's very crafty. He'll eat your lunch. He'll take your lunch money. He'll leave you out there to die. He'll leave you to starve. He'll leave you to die. Don't care one thing about you. But if you pray and you seek God's face and draw close to Him, He will draw close to you and He will never leave you and He will never forsake you. Amen? Amen? And people need to know that. Lost people need to know that. Christians need to know that. Our politicians need to know that. Everybody needs to know that. And a lot of people do know that. They just choose not to follow the directions. Choose not to. We need to stop sleeping on Jesus because trials are coming and you need to be ready and equipped for the days approaching. If Jesus tells you to do something, you do it. God tells you to do something, you do it. Just like he told them here. Because you remember they had some troubles after Jesus died. Even before Jesus died, they had some troubles, right? You know, the, you, some of y'all know the story. What if they'd have prayed? You've had troubles in your life, right? Right? I've had troubles in my life, folks. I'm not, just because I'm the pastor, I'm up here, I don't mean that I'm, let me get down here with y'all. Because I'm right where you're at. God has just called me to do something different than he's called you to do. You know, all Christians are called to be an instrument for God. God's just called me to be a pastor. I, sometimes I don't know why. Sometimes I don't understand but I'm locked in of what God wants me to do. And, uh, you know, you can, you, you, that's, that's, we all deal with stuff in our life, right? If you're living, you're dealing with something. 
And we need to give it to God. We need to pray to God to overcome the temptation. We need to pray to God to where when somebody challenges, challenges us, cha- let me get it right, challenges us on our faith that we can stand tall for the Lord Jesus Christ. We was in Sunday school this morning and a young lady was sharing about a class that she was taking and about how they downed and they, they were talking totally against uh, Christianity. And for somebody that might not be for somebody that would be impressionable, like a young college kid, could have possibly changed her mind, but she did not change her mind about who God and Christ is to her. So we need to equip ourselves, young and old, to where when that time's come, because it's going to come, just like it came for the disciples to change their mind or to question whether Jesus was the Messiah or question, has he been lying to us the whole time? Has he been deceiving us the whole time? He's, he's fixing to get arrested and get killed and get be hung on a cross and dead. We've got to equip ourselves to be ready. And I hope you are. I hope you're equipping yourself. I hope you're in the Word, reading the Word. I hope you're praying, communicating with God. I hope you're involved in in, in Bible study, coming to Sunday school, coming to church, being exposed to the Word. And I'm going to leave you with this. Pray, don't sleep. Have you ever slept on the job? Have you ever fell asleep on the job? Come on, be honest. And then you wake up, and you're like, whoa, good gracious. I'm falling asleep on the job. Well, think about that when you're sleeping on Jesus. He's watching. He knows what you're doing. He knows you better than anybody else. Be that way about Jesus and your service to Jesus like you are to your job if you fall asleep on your job. Be startled. Oh my gosh, I'm falling asleep. I need to get back on track with Christ. As we get back on track with our jobs, you know, you fall asleep in the chair and you wake up, oh my gosh, I got to get back to work or I'm going to get fired. We need to do that with Jesus. We feel ourselves falling asleep, folks. If you're falling asleep, wake up. Get back with God. 1 Thessalonians 5 6. So let us not sleep as others do. But let us be alert and sober. Because another thing, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who may devour. So if you sleep, if you're not sober, if you're not, if you're not, if you are not alert and you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit of God, the devil is going to eat you up. So where are you at? Have you been sleeping on God as a Christian? Come back to Jesus. Repent. Say, Lord Jesus, I've been sleeping on you. I have not been doing what I need to do for you. I have not been doing what I need to do for my family. I have not been needing to do what I need to do for my church. I I haven't been doing what I need to do for just people around me to be that godly example. Lord, just forgive me. It says that if, if, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us. He will. Come back to him. Swallow your pride. Pride hurts a lot of people. Humble yourself before God. Repent. Accept him. You might be still messed up. But come to him and have that humbleness to come to him. He will will make you what he wants you to be. Don't think that you're too bad to be saved. Don't think you're, you've gone too far to not come back to Jesus because he's got his arms open and he wants you to come back. He wants you. He wants a relationship with you. He's got a plan for you, young and old, to use you in a way that will blow your mind. And only he can do it. But it takes a humbleness from us to make ourselves available to where God can use you. I see it. I see it in people here at Concord Baptist Church where people just humble themselves. They might not be the best at it. They might not have been trained at it, but the Lord is equipping them to do what they need to do when they need to do it. And I'm living proof of that too. So if there's a decision you need to make, 
make that decision today. We're going to have a song of invitation. If you need to come to Jesus, come to Jesus. If you need to rededicate your life, come down there to the altar and just do business with God. If this is a place you want to become a member and you want to get involved and you want to get, you want to start, you want to commit to membership. Committing to membership is like committing to uh, um, a job. You take the job and you commit yourself to that job to where you're working for that job. Or you are committing to marriage and, and, and you, you're committed. You're not just dating no more. You have made a solid commitment that this is for life and this is forever. Same thing as you commit to a church and membership. You're saying, I'm going to commit to this church and I'm going to serve this church and let God use me any way he can inside the walls of these church. That's what it's all about with membership. But first and foremost, know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Become a member of the family of God. And that's all over the world. So whatever decision you need to make, make it. Let's pray together, and then we'll sing. Dear Lord, we just thank you for your message today. And Lord, I just pray for just whoever that's in here. Lord, whatever decision they make, whether it's at the altar or whether they're in prayer, Lord, that you'll, your spirit will move. As it says, Lord, in your word, John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that whosoever, whoever, believes in you will have eternal life. Lord, I pray that people will repent and turn and follow you. And in return, you will make them and you will shape them into what you want them to be in your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 602, stand in your center.
you decided to follow Jesus? Are you following Jesus? Only you know. Only God knows if you're following him or not. So I hope and pray that you are. And I hope that you're uh, experiencing God every day. Because it's a great thing. And I tell you what, we got two more praises today. Amen. So uh, I'll have Miss Kelsey come up. And what's, what's your last name, Kelsey? Cashwell. Cashwell. Come right here, everybody see. Pretty young lady. She's been coming to the church. And she is, uh, she's been involved in the Easter play, right? And some other plays. And just been coming and coming, being faithful, being here. So praise God for that. And she's coming today, says she has repented of her sin. And she's accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And she wants to get baptized. Praise God. Ain't that it? <laughs> So everybody in here, I want you to get to know this young lady right here. Just like everybody else that comes up here and gets saved, we need to get to know them people. We need to encourage them people and make them a part of Concord Baptist Church. You also want to be a member of the church, correct? So I need a motion from the floor. We got one. Second. And everybody else says amen. 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 So I want to welcome you to Concord Baptist Church. I want you to sit down right over there. And... Uh, What's that? Oh, okay. Here's Jessica. Jessica Howard. Come on up here. Jessica does not like to talk right now. I'm still getting to know everybody. So um, Jessica believed that she was already saved. She got baptized as a child. But like me, she strayed away and been doing her own thing. And since she's been coming here, she's been um, eager to learn more and get involved and just rededicate her life and just nail it down and make sure that she's made that commitment. So we made sure today, and so she's a follower of the Lord, and she wants her this church to help her grow, and I think she's going to come here. Okay, and then I'll let you yeah. And she wants to join the church too as a membership. It seems like she's a part of the church. She's been coming here for almost a year. So she's been coming here almost a year, so praise God for that. And I tell you, she's been dedicated coming, bringing them beautiful girls. And that is awesome, too. So get to know her. Get to know her girls because they're a part of this church. And just make them feel welcome. So we praise God for that. I want a motion for the floor for accept her for membership today. Everybody else say amen. amen. Praise God. So you can sit down right there. So it's been an awesome week, great week. Um, if there's any, and also we've been starting to pass these out to uh, ones that get saved, and it's called Welcome to the Family, and it talks about salvation, assurance of your salvation, talks about baptism, talks about praying, talks about reading your Bible, and uh, gathering with a church body. So it's all the part of the North American Mission Board. So we give this, yeah, sure. Hey, so. And uh, if we run out, we can order some. So, all right. Man, it's been an awesome day. Praise God. Praise God. So, uh, well, go out this week. Don't sleep on God. Get your sleep. It's important to get sleep, but don't sleep on God. Yes, ma'am. Praise. Well, let's hear it. Oh, 
Praise God for that. Praise the Lord for that. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? All minds, all hearts clear? All right. Okay, dokie. All right. Mr. David, you mind closing us in a word of prayer? But before that, uh, if y'all two young ladies would come out with me, uh, people want to love on you and uh, congratulate you and uh, welcome you to Concord Baptist Church, which you've been here. So, but y'all, uh, y'all congratulate them. It's an awesome day. Angels in heaven are rejoicing. Amen. Yes. All right, man. Thank you.